Hey guys, Dan Smith, Corrective Training here. Welcome to another edition of Courtyard Mobility. Guys, for longer content of these videos, please head over to my YouTube page, Dan Smith, Corrective Training. Uh, like and subscribe, and then you can be able to check out all, all that we do here. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about isometrics for tendons. All right, so first up, we need to figure out what are tendons. All right, tendons attach muscle to bone. Okay, so um think of your quadricep okay your big thigh muscle it connects from one end of the joint across to the other end okay so again tendons attaching muscle to bone secondly we need to figure out what are isometrics okay so what is an isometric exercise um, an easy way to think of it is putting a joint muscle under strain without shortening or lengthening the muscle okay so it's almost like holding it at a mid-range position or any position throughout a range of motion um, and just kind of yeah holding it there okay so a good example is if you think of a bicycle all right so this would be our shortening that would be our lengthening our isometric would just be holding it at a mid-range okay and it can either be against external resistance against body weight um Kind of anything that's going to put that muscle under strain but without moving it through that range all right so what are the benefits what are the benefits of isometrics particularly for tendons okay so current research shows that loading is at the forefront of pain reduction okay there are other means at which people are trying to reduce tendon pain whether that be by a rest whether that be by medication seeking medical advice and i'm not saying that that will not help but i truly believe that loading primarily or starting off with isometric exercises is really really important for getting you on track again from any form of tendon pain okay so um yeah the benefits again so we know that loading is at the forefront of pain reduction but what's also nice about isometrics in particular is that it allows someone to begin the loading process again okay and finding a comfortable zone where there's not too much pain all right yet the structures are still being worked okay so say now you have hurt your uh, knee tendon via heavy back squats all right doing a simple isometric exercise which targets the knee is a good way to start the reloading process but while still being relatively comfortable and pain-free or with as little pain as possible and from there you can slowly build your way back up to a heavy back squat or whatever you were doing previously okay there is a pain numbing effect on it so research shows that if you do your isometric exercises all right they actually cause a bit of a um, pain yeah pain nulling inhibition which then you uh, will allow you to further load that tendon afterwards so say now you do a knee knee specific isometrics you and then you follow it up with some form of squatting lunging you'll find that your pain is a little bit less going into the squatting and the lunging due to that kind of nulling effect of pain during those isometrics so nice way to build some confidence um, and feel a little bit better throughout your training sessions okay the big and important one that we need to focus on now is how often do we do it how many when etc okay what type of exercises so um, the very basic basic kind of prescription for isometrics per se is three to five sets of 30 to 45 seconds in whatever different pose or position that you are targeting okay so a lot of people out there will have a different kind of view on this or they might tweak it around a little bit some will say that doing longer holds of up to two to three minutes for one set is best some will say that doing 20 to 30 sets of 10 seconds is best and then some will generally go with the three to five sec uh, three to five sets of 30 to 45 seconds my advice here start off with the basic three to five sets of 30 to 45 seconds and then you can tweak it around according to what you feel works best for you okay so if you find that doing a three minute hold 
um, is best, then I would say stick with the three minute hold, longer duration isometrics. If you find that doing shorter duration isometrics with uh, more sets is better, then do that. But start off by working on a 30 to 45 second base for three to five sets, okay? And then you can kind of play around with how you want to work it. All right, so areas of the body which are common tendon issues or will cause tendon pain quite commonly. We have our Achilles tendon in our ankle. We have our patellar tendon and quadriceps tendon in our knees. We have our gluteal tendinopathy, so where it attaches into our hip, okay? We have our hamstring tendon, um, which can cause some hamstring tendinopathy, especially in runners. And then we have our bicep tendinopathy, bicep tendon pain, okay? Common in your sports where there's a lot of overhead motions, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work through some different poses slash positions which one can use in an isometric fashion getting back to exercises. So we're going to start down in the ankle with our Achilles tendon and what we've got here is a calf raise variation. Okay, so let's check it out. So, calf raise, what we're looking to do about a meter or so away from the wall, double or two feet down, we're looking to rise up into a calf raise position. Okay, so now I have the tendinopathy on my right leg or the kind of tendon pain in that right leg I'm just going to look to slip this left leg while being in that calf raise on the right okay. if that's still a little bit too tender I can stay on the double leg all right but once you get a little bit of confidence lift that left leg up and we are in that right calf raise position okay so that's a great one to use for ankles. Next up, we're gonna to move to our knees. All right, we have our patella tendon at the bottom. All right, we have our quadricep tendon at the top. So patella, quadricep, two movements which we're gonna go through is a wall sit and a split lunge position. Okay, so first up, wall sit position. Feet out in front of you. We're looking to sit down at 90 degrees. Okay, and just hold your 30 to 45 seconds. What I can do is also lift Get onto my toes, hold here. All right, you can add external weight again 30 to 45 seconds. Next up, split lunge position. So, I take one foot forward, one leg back, okay, and I'm just sitting down into this position here. Knees about yay so off the floor, and I'm holding both legs, okay, regardless of which side you have your tendon pain. So, that's for knee specific. Next up, let's move to gluteal tendinopathy. So, that is a pain kind of originating or coming on on this head of the femur over here. So, it's side pain. What I'm going to do, I've got a big boaster ball here. You can use a soccer ball, basketball, whatever you have. Okay. One leg, knee against the ball. Opposite leg down. I lift the leg closest to the wall. And all I'm looking to do is push this leg into the ball. Okay, I'll feel that on the opposite leg, more so than on this leg. And I'm holding there. So, again, ball against the wall, knee against the ball. I lift the knee closest to the wall. Up, press into the ball. I stabilize with this leg. Chest can be nice and tall. can be a little bit bent at the hips. And I'm holding there. Okay. That is primarily for gluteal tendinopathy type pain. Next up, all right, hamstring type tendinopathies. What I would recommend, guys, glute bridges are excellent. Use them, okay? Um, just make sure not to arch your back excessively and not to lift maybe the hips too high to start. That might aggravate the tendon a bit too much, okay? But glute bridges are a great way to work through any type of hamstring tendon pain. Okay, so I'm going to show you that quickly. See that we're in here. So, I lie nice and flat. I lift my heels up. I'm just hold them there. Alright, we can slowly come down. Drive up, hold. Okay. 
So hamstring variation there. If you know any other position that you might find is better, you're more than welcome to do it, but that's just a very basic one for hamstring. Last one, which you're gonna do is a bicep tendon pain. Okay, so often felt up into the shoulder, not too much down into the elbow, more so into the shoulder position. What we're gonna be doing, I've got a band here. Okay, I loop it through my foot. All I'm looking to do is just bring this up, just to some tension. Okay, we're up at about 90 degrees there. So again, from here, up, hold. I can feel that nicely into the top of my shoulder. There, 45 seconds. If you're feeling a little bit more confident, you found that you um, that exercise is becoming too easy, you can also go with a bit of a straight arm. So from here, palm up, and I'm just looking, or you can go, let's go thumb up, and just holding there. Okay, so again, so you can either go palm up, I recommend maybe thumbs up rather, and just give that to a little bit of tension. Okay. So two ones there for the bicep, that bicep curl, and also with the straight arm. All right, great at helping to nullify that shoulder tendinopathy before it gets any worse, and by also getting back to training, okay? So guys, those are the general movements, I would say, for the various tendons all over the body. Um, like I say, very, very basic. If you find that you have a specific tendinopathy pain, you're more than welcome to message me in my private messages, and I'm more than happy to help, all right? So, last kind of closing point. Do we only do isometrics when we have tendon pain, or should we do, be doing isometrics regardless of tendon pain or not? Okay, my thought. Isometrics should be used regardless, okay? whether you have tendon pain or whether you don't, because they are so brilliant just for overall tendon health. Okay, think of lower back pain. We know that we don't have lower back pain, but a lot of us are still doing core exercises to prevent that type of pain from arising. Same goes for tendons, okay? We should be including these isometrics to be keeping our tendons healthy and so that we are looking to prevent any form of tendon pain down the line. So if you know that you are in a sport where you're doing a lot of running, um, but you don't have tendon pain at the moment, I would recommend starting to do some of these isometrics so that you can keep that tendon pain away, all right? Same thing, if you do a sport where there's a lot of overhead movements, all right, get that bicep shoulder working in that isometric fashion in order to prevent problems down the line. Guys, Again, thank you so much for watching. Head over to my YouTube page for further content. We'll be back on Friday for another edition of Courtyard Mobs.